Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at OneSpin with Sasha Stomakovich, who's going to talk today about billion gate design connectivity. Sasha, as we get into billion gate designs, and, and a lot of these are happening at 7 nanometers and yep. beyond, what sort of problems are you starting to encounter? First of all, uh, the design size is the problem uh, that uh, th those designs are having billions gates and uh, we need a, a special way of handling those type of designs and special way of provers and the technology. And uh, at the end of the day, we also need a, a, a new methodology to, to deal with these designs to solve the problems that the customers are seeing today. And since we are talking about uh, design integration, we had to uh, address all those problems for, for them. And a lot of this is increasingly heterogeneous designs too, right? It used to be one processor or multiple cores and then a Correct. memory. Yeah, that's now you've got all these different blocks because Moore's Law has run out of steam, so now we need to figure out different ways of moving it forward and change the architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in, in many cases, uh, as a verification engineer, you don't even know how the things are connected. So you need help from the tool that uh, to answer that question and tell you, oh yeah, they are connected, and the tool uh, prints you the information about that connectivity. So in these complex designs, why don't you draw out what we're going to be dealing with? Yeah, so why don't we start with uh, one example. So let's say that this is uh, our SOC design that is uh, enormously big, and uh, what we are trying to address here and answer is, for example, we have a block uh, here somewhere in the design, and another block here, and maybe uh, some other blocks uh, on the path, let's say, between the two. So what we want to make sure, for example, is that pins of this block and the pins of, of the other block are actually connected. And uh, how we do this, so maybe I can take another one, maybe I can take the red one, and then we can actually, we want to check whether these two are really connected. And where our users need help with is to answer that question and figure out, hey, uh, was there, for example, an inverter here? So what happens if there is a flip-flop here? Do these blocks always show up? So sometimes they get used differently. Sometimes they're off when they're, uh, because they're, they're powered down. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're uh, in full use. Does it matter? So uh, for the user, uh, who is uh, trying to run this connectivity checking, he doesn't know. So that's why he needs the, the tool and the environment that will check that in the design and answer that question, really. So, uh, for example, if, uh, if this uh, signal is tied here incorrectly, the tool will uh, uh, go in and, and answer that question to say, well, I, unfortunately, dear user, uh, uh, these two signals are having different polarity, for example. And you're also dealing, with, as you started integrating all these blocks, with noise issues that you never had to deal with before because you're in tight proximity, right? Yes, that, that, that is uh, also another aspect of, uh, of, of looking into it. You don't know what is in between and how many hops are in between. So uh, that's how we were actually approached by our customer. They said, look, we have a problem and we don't have today a tool, neither formal, not even an uh, easy way of doing it in simulation to address this question. And we have millions of connections that we need to give to the tool. So what we really need is a simple way of specifying those connections and then the tool finding. So for example, uh, we can have, uh, we, we can give to the tool a module name here. So for example, M1 and uh, here M2, and then the tool should actually find all the instances of these two modules and verify if for every signal that is specified in these two modules that is actually given as another uh, argument to the tool, the tool will actually check whether the connectivity is established. And then finally, it will give a report with the information if there is an inverter on the pod, if there is a, a flip-flop on the pod or a latch, and uh, uh, how many hops are on the pod, because sometimes you can get from A to B uh, this way, or you can pick a, a completely different route and uh, do things uh, uh, completely incorrectly and then come to the conclusion, oh, that's actually wrong. Does it matter if all these blocks are on the same die or whether they're in a package? That for, for the tool, this doesn't matter. So uh, as long as we read in the, the whole design, and the uh, important thing is, let me put it a different way, 
that these two are uh, visible in the design. So if the tool sees them, that's enough. And what you're really tracking here is signal integrity, right? You want to make sure that signal can run wherever you want it to go. Yes, that's a different way of saying is the, the, we're checking whether the two uh, uh, blocks in the designs are properly connected, yes. So how has this been solved in the past? Obviously, we had less dense designs. We didn't have a billion gates. What were people doing? So uh, the only solution uh, before we come up with, uh, with this one was actually to do the simulation. And uh, we all know that uh, simulation is as good as our test benches. Uh, our customer was saying, look, we really want to do this formally because formal is doing exhaustive verification and provides the, the full, uh, full coverage for uh, the design and the information that it is providing back to me as a user. The trouble with formal, though, is that it's very slow unless you really define that problem very tightly, right? Yes, that's, uh, that's very correct. Uh, we know that uh, the bigger the design is, the, the, the more complex it is for the formal tool. What we had to do is to step back and think of, uh, of the specific problem and the application, and we had to develop special proof engines that can deal with these kind of the designs. And it was not only the engines, but the, the way that they, those engines are engaged and uh, uh, the problems are created for them to be solved. So what happens if something fails during your checks? Mm -hmm. How do you find that? How do you deal with it? Yeah, so uh, let's look back into the, this example, right? So let's assume that uh, we wanted to check, uh, I don't know, uh, reset here and uh, uh, reset here. And then, uh, uh, for example, uh, we are expecting that this is the positive uh, uh, edge reset. And then the tool can say, oh yeah, these two are connected, but unfortunately there is an inversion on the pod. In other words, we are changing the polarity on, of, uh, of this reset to be a, a negative reset. This can be a specification, but in the particular example that I actually gave, that's incorrect statement. And then the tool prints the information uh, about uh, what I just said. That the two, uh, yeah, there is the uh, the physical connection between the two, but unfortunately, at this particular design location with the complete hierarchy, the tool can print. Unfortunately, there is also an inversion. Whether that is expected or not. It's then on the designer, maybe, or the verification engineer to decide and to specify correctly. For example, if there are two inverters, then that is correct, right? So we change just the polarity twice. So this gives you a drill down into where the problems are that at a level that you didn't have before, right? Yes, that is, that is correct. So it's not only saying uh, yes or no, but it gives you the information uh, how. Because uh, uh, no matter if something is proven connected or not, the tool provides the debugging information. Another useful information could be the number of the flops on the path or number of the hops on the path. So how many nets the, uh, this uh, uh, connectivity uh, or the tool had to go through to establish this. So if you have 5,000 signals on the path between source and the destination, that can be a problem for your design because you are not expecting that. Where would you know how to use this and where to use it versus, say, uh, total coverage and verification where you would go through and say, okay, we, we now understand where the uh, problems may be, but we also understand where the problems aren't. Yeah, so this is an app that should be used when you are really dealing with the big designs. So when, the, we, are near, when we are talking about the SOCs or system on a system, uh, everybody has, uh, we also uh, have the, the standard connectivity checking app, but this app, and we call it the Connectivity Excel, so it's really the next generation for the enormously big devices when you're having billions of gates and a uh, 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 huge number of the connections that needs to be solved and checked formally. This is one of the shifts that's gone on in verification, right? Mm -hmm. Because now you want to both be able to look at it from a big picture standpoint, but also really zoom in to where you need to look when you have a problem. Yes, that is, that is correct. So you need to have uh, uh, detailed information about what is going on in the design. So what happens if you don't have all the information you need to make that kind of, of judgment about where you have to focus? Uh -huh, I see. So uh, what you're saying, so what if I don't have the complete information about the path, about the, the signal name? What can be done there, you can use the wildcard, so the star operator or the question mark operator, so like a regular expressions. And then the tool can for you actually uh, look into the database, into your design, and find all the signals that are actually doing this pattern matching and, uh, and run the connectivity checking for you. So for, uh, in that sense, uh, you can start uh, uh, from, from one line connectivity input 
and then the tool will unroll that into thousands and thousands of the lines. And that's what the particular customer has. So they are literally giving the, the tool uh, a thousand connecti uh, connectivity checking specification file and the tool produces out of that a million connectivity checks that are run through the formal tool. S Sasha Stamikovich, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much. My pleasure.